In this video, we'll start looking at the idea of how we can handle non-linear differential equations. So it turns out that in the real world, the equations that we'll try to solve, most systems of differential equations are not linear. Right? Being linear is a very big restriction on what the system can look like. The linear systems, say of two components, must look like this and that's it. Right? You can only have these sorts of terms where it's a function of t times x, function of t times y, and a function of t in the end, and same for the other derivative. But a lot of real world situations involve direct interaction between these two functions. Right, so if you want to model something that's like a predator-prey dynamic or a competing species dynamic or a chemical reaction, you're going to need some sort of interaction terms. And these are usually written with a product of the two functions. It looks something like an x times a y, but that makes the equation nonlinear. Because I don't have just x times the function of t, y times the function of t by themselves, they're now interacting with each other directly, this makes it nonlinear. There are also some situations where you don't get linear behavior, so you have something with like an x squared in your function that also makes it nonlinear. And so we want to be able to handle equations that have these things in them as well and try to figure out what can we say about systems like this. And is there a way we can use our linear analysis from before to make this easier? So the main type of systems we want to analyze here are autonomous nonlinear systems. Again, getting too generic with our systems means that it's going to be hard and hard to analyze. So we're looking at autonomous ones first. And by this, for a two-component system, we mean that something like dx dt is just some function of x and y, and dy dt is some other function just of x and y, since there is no explicit dependence on t in these functions. In general, we're okay with this assumption because most physical systems satisfy this property. The main idea here being that the way in which these populations or things interact doesn't explicitly depend on like the exact time of day or the exact time this is going to be running. The model that governs how they interact is the same. It's going to develop over time because the values themselves are going to change over time. There's no explicit dependence on t and how they actually interact with each other. So we're not really out of luck if we have to strike to this sort of situation because most things will do this. Population models, multiple tank problems, all that stuff generally will not have explicit dependence on t. So any approach we make here will be worthwhile and successful to go forward and use this to solve some problems. We've already seen some autonomous stuff before, namely first order equations that were autonomous. We had an approach there. Let's see if we can extend the same ideas to systems. For first order equations, we had phase lines. We've discussed phase portraits for linear systems already. What's the idea of these phase lines? Well, the idea was I would find equilibrium solutions and then determine whether the solution would be increasing or decreasing between them to tell which way it was going to go between those points. We'd find equilibrium solutions and then use the actual function to determine whether it was increasing or between them. And that was great when we had a one-dimensional problem to solve. But now that we're looking at systems, we're going to have multi-dimensional problems to solve. So the idea of increasing or decreasing aren't really going to make too much sense in this idea of systems. But we can use the same ideas to sort of try to figure out what's going on at these different points. So the first step was equilibrium solutions. For first-order equations, we had dy dt was f of y. This was the points where f of y was zero. When we have a system with two components, we need everything to be zero because the point of these solutions here was that because the derivative is zero, the solution does not move anywhere over time. If we want the same thing to happen for the system, I need both derivatives to be zero so that nothing moves anywhere over time. So we need points x, y so that both f and g are zero. We're going to be able to simultaneously solve these two equations at the same time. Ideally, that results in just factoring the equations and then sort of seeing how the terms match up. Let's see an example of what this might look like. I want to find all the solutions of the system here. dx dt is x minus 2 times y minus 4, and dy dt is x minus y times y plus 3. So if we want to find these solutions, we need both these to be zero at the same time. So I need x minus 2 y minus 4 to be 0, and I need x minus y times y plus 3 to be 0. So these we can solve sort of independently on their own, right? We can tell that if this first one's going to be 0, we're either going to have x equals 2 or y equals 4. And on the other side, we're going to have either x equals y or y equals minus 3. And now to get all the solutions, we want to figure out at what different coordinate points are both of these things true? 
and this means I have to satisfy at least one equation from each side at the same time. So I could take this first and this first condition to get to the point 2 comma 2 works because x equals 2 and x equals y. I could pair this first with the second to get that 2 minus 3 works. I could pair the second with the first to get that 4 4 works. And I could pair the second with the second to now have a problem because I can't have both y equals 4 and y equals minus 3. So that does not work in equal solution because I can't use these two to give me a point together. Now things to make sure that is are not points, right? 2, 4 is not a point that's equal to solution. Why? That's both of these being 0, but this one will not be 0. But if I plug 2, 4 in here, I do not get 0 from this one. I'll get 0 twice here, but I won't get it over here. Similarly, the point minus 3 minus 3 is not a solution because that's twice 0 over here and not 0 at all on this side. So these two here are not solutions. So the three that we get are these three right here for these solutions. That's the idea of nonlinear systems equation. We really want to figure out how do these behave in general. And we're talking to autonomous systems. We can then say, okay, where are equilibrium solutions? And once we have that, maybe we can go from there to figure out what's going on near them and then use that to build up how we can solve these problems in the future and analyze these more complicated systems to get general ideas of overall behavior of these functions over time.